Fireball malware infects millions of computers worldwide, a one-login breach creates headaches for users, and WikiLeaks is back with another Vault 7 leak. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for June 6, 2017. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Real quick, make sure to subscribe and hit that little notification bell button right below the video to see the show as soon as it goes live, and make sure to check out patreon.com slash threatwire to see how you can support the show. It's a really great way to contribute to lots of your favorite podcasts on Patreon, so check it out. And now, on to the news. Big thanks to Desi Matrix on Patreon for sending in this story. Over 250 million computers worldwide are currently infected with malware dubbed Fireball, which originally derived from a Chinese company, according to Checkpoint researchers. The Beijing-based company is called Rafotech, and they sell digital marketing and mobile game apps to 300 million customers worldwide. But when a user downloads seemingly legitimate software from the provider, it is also bundled with Fireball, which is a browser hijacker that has the ability to execute any type of code on a victim's computer. Oftentimes, bundling is done without a user's consent or knowledge when they download an actual product that they actually wanted. In Fireball's case, it changes the user's browser to a new search engine, then collects private data, then redirects to an actual search browser like Google, for example. Fireball also installs plugins to boost advertisements, which obviously directly benefit Rafotech monetarily. The scary part is that although Fireball simply does those two things, which could be considered trivial, its potential is much more serious. Fireball could be a Trojan horse waiting for the right moment to be used for a lot more, a huge attack. Rafatech's Fireball bundle does include a legit digital certificate, but Fireball still acts like traditional malware in that it hides its true nature. Countries that were hit the most with Fireball include India, Brazil, Mexico, Indonesia, and the US, including, get this, 20% of worldwide corporate networks. So one out of five corporate networks have been hit with Fireball, which could create a huge data breach if Fireball was ever used for even worse campaigns. If you are worried that you are infected, you should probably just make sure that you recognize your homepage, your browser, and the default search engine, and that they were indeed downloaded and set by you. If you do find that you have been infected with it, you can try uninstalling the bundle, and you can clean your machine with anti-malware or adware cleaning software. Remove unknown extensions or any kind of add-ons from your browser that you don't recognize, and lastly, restore your browser to default settings. On May 31st, one login, which is a popular cloud-based identity tool for businesses, posted in a blog article on their site that they had detected malicious access on their US operating servers. The attack started around 2 a.m. PST that same day, and it was shut down by 9 a.m. when recognized by a one login employee. The attacker gained access to a set of AWS keys that are used for authentication on that server, and they did reconnaissance on the one login server until being noticed. While on the server, they had access to database tables with information on users, applications, and various keys. At this time, one login doesn't know if they were able to decrypt any sensitive data, so they are asking customers to take some action and precautions. The company is working with law enforcement as well on an investigation. Now, since one login allows users to log into sites and apps via one whole platform, it can also be a serious target for attackers. Since, according to messages one login sent to affected customers, the compromised data included the ability to get this decrypt encrypted data. So this means that customers have to make new API keys and OAuth tokens, create new security certificates, update any kind of stored notes, and obviously update all of your passwords. This breach of one login servers comes less than a year after a previous breach that happened in August of 2016, where a bug in a feature called Secure Notes allowed for logging in via plain text. Now, of course, with any breach, it is wise to change your passwords, turn on two-factor authentication, and recycle old data that is stored in the tool. Also, make sure to keep an eye out for any kind of phishing attempts sent to you via email, because those would grant them lots of information. WikiLeaks has dumped some new data from the CIA Vault 7 documents titled Pandemic on June 1st. Pandemic is yet another CIA project that installs itself with persistence on a Windows machine and shares files and programs with remote users on 
a local network. If a target computer attempts to access a file on a server where Pandemic is installed, Pandemic will send the user a malicious version of that file, which delivers a Trojan to the user's machine. It does take advantage of Microsoft Windows file sharing on local networks, which is called SMB, which we have mentioned before, along with this thing called Windows File System Filter Driver, which is a driver that is easy for devs to build in higher quality, leading to less bugs than legacy drivers, and it requires a valid digital certificate to be installed. Now, when a user accesses the file via SMB protocol, the filter replaces the legit file with a malicious one. This will spur many more infections on the same network, such as a disease outbreak would, hence the name Pandemic. Huh, go figure. Pandemic takes about 15 seconds to install, and it can replace up to 20 files at a time on a server. According to security researchers, this seems like a tool for a very specific use case scenario, and no examples have been found in the wild. The release of documents for Pandemic was somewhat small compared to previous Vault 7 documents, and the CIA has still never confirmed or denied the authenticity of the documentation. Thank you again to all the wonderful, brilliant, amazing, awesome people out there who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. If you can spare a bit of change, a quarter an episode, something like that, it all helps keep Threatwire completely independent and ad-free. We now have an audio-only RSS feed, extra content every week, and early access for our patrons. We might even feature your fur baby in an upcoming episode. And that is very important. Remember, patrons, to share your favorite security-focused news stories in the Patron Community tab to get featured in the show. And of course, if you cannot donate, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell icon, share this episode on your favorite social media networks, pretty much whatever you want to get the word out there. We think this show is so important for everybody's security and privacy. And use the hashtag ThreatWire so that we can see it and we might even retweet you. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.